Matthew chapter 2. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem, and you'd be surprised to think that people don't, people don't realize Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Some, some think he was born in Jerusalem. Some think he was born in, in Nazareth, where it said, you know, he shall be called a Nazarite. But the prophecy and the birth happened in Bethlehem, the city of David. And we'll get in that, Lord willing, when we get to Luke. In the days of Herod, the king. Behold, there came wise men. How many does it say? I can't hear you. No, don't say three, because it doesn't say three. Men, plural, means there are more than one. Let's look at what the Bible said. You're going to see in this chapter, I'm going to get a little sarcastic. From the east to Jerusalem. So when the wise men set out for Jesus, probably from Babylon, they're from the east. They know more than, than the scholars of the seminary in America. When they go looking, and we're going to see in a moment, the king. When they go looking for the king, they go to Jerusalem. Because history has told you the king of the Jews, we'll see that in a moment, is Jerusalem. Saying, where is he that is born? K, capitalized king. Now what have I taught you through all the Old Testament? When you see your Bible, don't mess with the lettering. Not just the word. Don't mess with the lettering. If your Bible does not have a capital K in Matthew 2 2, you need to throw it out. Because that capital K goes with all the capital K's in the Old Testament. And that if you could get a Jehovah Witness to sit down with you and run the scriptures to show King of the Jews, well, who are they talking about? We're going to talk about Jesus. Well, that's God. There are places in the Old Testament that K capitalized in King, where it's not capitalized in any other King, is God. There's no shadow of doubt unless you pervert the Scriptures. For we have seen His star. Now, Revelation gives us, tells us stars are angels. And Revelation tells us that an angel is sent to the Apostle John that is of Jesus Christ. If that star is an angel. If that star is an angel, you look out the skies, why do you think they worship the stars? Why do you think they gave the stars names when God already named them? That's a form of angelic worship. And are come to worship him, the king. Of the Jew, these are these are Gentiles. They're, they're you call them magi. Means they're smart men. And they come by exurban disguise and say, "Hey, that's an unusual star there. That wasn't there before. Check the scriptures. Check the logs. Check the books." 
And they had a copy of the Old Testament that we're going to look at in a moment. And you know, over there in the land of Israel, and over there in, in, in uh, Jerusalem, about this time, about this date, they're going to be the king of the Jews is going to come. Look what it say, king of the Jews. It's funny how we're going to see the Gentiles are ready to receive the king of the Jews, and the Jews are like, Ugh. uh huh, okay. When Herod the king, small k, heard these things, he was troubled. Why? His throne. There's a king, and he's coming, and he has a star. Uh oh. What is this king? Who is this king? He's come to conquer me. No, nope, that's the second advent. This star is the lamb. And all of Jerusalem, that means the Jews, with him. Why would the Jews be all upset that here is their king coming? Here comes their Messiah, the prophecy. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes, those who know the scriptures, of the people, the Jews, together, he gets a little meeting with the Jews, the Hebrews, the scholars, the priests, not just the priests, the chief priests, the two of them. And he demanded of them where Christ should be born. Who? The anointed one of God. Herod has had a revelation by the Gentiles or by the Jews or by the Magi. There's not only a king coming, but there's the anointed, there's a Messiah coming. And he is to be born. Now Herod is, is shaking in his boots. Because he, he has news that his entire kingdom is going to be turned upside down. And they said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea, there's two Bethlehems, for this is written by the prophet, Thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not least among the princes of Judah. It's a little tiny city, town. David came from nowhere, really. For out of thee shall come a governor, capital G, that shall rule my people, Israel. My people, Israel. There's that statement again. We've already seen it in Matthew. Not the church. Now, when we go over to Micah chapter 5, which we've already studied, and you can get it on our website, Micah chapter 5, verse 2. This is the prophet. This is what they're reading to Herod. Scriptures were known. For thou, Bethlehem of Ephraim, Ephraim, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall come forth unto me, that is to be the ruler in Israel, whose going forth had been from old, from everlasting. Now Micah said ruler. Micah said ruler. Micah said ruler. Matthew 2, 6, the chief priests and the scribes, all of them, or some of them, go up to Herod and say, governor. They don't like what it said in the scriptures. They fear the, the Roman government, the Roman ruler, so they change the scriptures to governor. They lessened 
the position of Jesus Christ. Because they fear man rather than fearing God. Did you see that? Jesus is not even two years old. We'll see that in a moment. And you think the scriptures were changed just under Westcott and Hort. Scriptures were changed by the Jews. Matthew 2 6, Micah 5 2. You see that? We fear the king, so we're going to change the scriptures. You know what's funny about governor? Is there'll be a man in Rome who's going to rise to power. He will be governor, and his name is Pontius Pilate. Pontius Pilate will be the governor of Judea. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, how many? I don't know. So he gathered the wise men in a private room somewhere and inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. <laughs> when did it come? Evidently, that star appeared when Jesus was born. And he sent them to Bethlehem. Why? Because they read to him Micah. No, hold on, men. He's not here in Jerusalem. Herod believes the scriptures. He says he's in Bethlehem. He said, go. Go. Jesus tells us to go. And the Christian says, and search diligently for the, the babe in the manger. Oh, wait a minute. No, 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 no. You, 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 your manger seems all wrong. Go and search for the young child. So when they spoke to Herod privately, quietly, no one around, they said about, and we're going to learn in a moment, about two years. About two years ago. Right around that time frame. He's no longer a baby. Jesus is a young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. Yeah, right. Sure. <clears throat> when they heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them. So my question is, and they're following the star, they end up in Jerusalem. They are put back on the right path, and there's, did that star disappear? Or did the wise men take a wrong turn? Wise men make, make errors too, you know. They're not perfect. It, you imagine along the way, you know, where, where are you going? We're going to Jerusalem. Yeah, but the star's over there. But you know the king of, of Israel is in Jerusalem. But the star is over there. I just shut up and let's go. Okay, but the star is over there. And can you imagine it coming out of Jerusalem and, and, and you know, the, the wise old... Magi said, I told you so, the star's over there. I don't know why we went over there. And you realize them going into Jerusalem. We're going to see in a moment, today and tomorrow, Lord willing, we're going to see that the king, Herod, is going to seek to kill Jesus. Had the wise men not shown up in Jerusalem, they would never even know. They were going on with life, and that baby would have grown up to a young child, that young child would have grew up. <laughs> and he would freak him out at 13 years old when he's sitting there with, with the teachers and the scribes and the priests, like, this kid knows more. So, when they heard the king, they parted, lo, the star, 
the star, not a star, which they saw. In, and listen, this star does not show up on Christmas. I remember growing up in the Catholic Church, and I remember one of the most biggest disappointments I had. I don't know what age I was. I was living in London, Connecticut as a young boy. I was before 16. And I heard, and they, they told us about this Christmas star, blah, 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 and the three wise men, blah, 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 blah. So I snuck out of the house Christmas Eve. After Mom put me to bed, I snuck out of the house, and I sat out in the, in the yard at night. I waited all night, and I looked up, and I didn't see no special big star with all the twinkly things. <coughs> Excuse me. That even the Baptists have on their nativity, so you know they got that big bright star. I didn't see it. And you're not gonna see it. And they'll say, Well, you know, the Christmas star. These the same people telling me that we came from the Big Bang. These the same people that could be telling us that they landed on the moon, which I don't believe. These same people that deny God and deny the Bible. I you know they didn't pick a star to fool everybody. Well, that's the Christmas star. I believe the Bible. Which they saw in the east. Went before them. Went before them. The star is moving. Isn't that a comment? Till it came and stood over where the what young child was. That star moves as they're moving. God's positioning star. And when that star goes over where the young child is, it stops like, here I am. You're about to approach it. Don't make no U-turn. Go straight. Go right around that bush. Go straight. Here he is. GPS? They had GPS in, Ma in Matthew too. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. This is no ordinary star. And when they come into the what? The main the manger scene shows the manger, the 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 the, the, uh, the, the trough, and little baby Jesus. Sometimes he's a light bulb. And they showed the, the, the shepherds, and they showed the, the Magi, and the Magi show up, and Jesus is not in the manger. He's in the house. He's not a baby in swaddling clothes. He's a young child. You know what you can do with your Baptist manger thing? You can get yourself the most defined baseball bat and beat the crap out of it. But don't do it. That's not nice. I would. I see the Southern Baptist Church. They put that manger scene up there. By a wife of the pastor who believes that Jesus died on Good Friday and he rose on Easter Sunday. Uh-huh. That man in the pulpit don't know nothing, and it proved to be. You cannot have a manger scene with the with the Magi. They're not at the manger scene. Because he's a young child. We'll get to the age. The Bible will tell us. That. Who does not want you to know the Bible and yet tells you things about God? The Catholic Church. All right, so. They come into the house. Got that? Still don't know how many there are. Never will. Listen, I don't think how many Magi, how many wise men came to Jesus is going to be important when we get to eternity. Unless all three, or four, or five, or six, or twenty, or thirty, whatever, if they're right, saved by God, by the dispensation. Okay? 
Some people are going to get quite, there might be two men that show up in there. Hi, oh, who are you guys? Where's the mad guy? The mad guy who? We visit Jesus. Where's the other one? What? What do you mean other one? There's only us two. No, we three kings of Orient Point, gathering gifts we don't know the Bible. Oh, the traditions of the Catholics in the Baptist Church, yonder bull crap we stepped in. Wipe your feet when you come into the house, it's not the manger no more. How about, hey, imagine if 20 men come up to you in heaven, how you do? who are you guys? We're the mad guys. Who? We're the ones that visited Jesus. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 20? I'd be laughing if there was 10. Where'd you get 10? 10's a Gentile number. How about 13 to really get Israel 13 rebellion? What about 12, the, the number of Israel? What about 7, the number of complete? All right, so watch this one. We're going to battle the Catholic Church again because the Catholic Church has gotten into Tammuz Mass. Notice Mary Christ Mass. Notice Mary came first. You misspelt it. Go back to school. They saw the young child, that's Jesus, with his mother, with Mary, his mother. Notice the child came first, not Mary. Mary, Christ, Mass is wrong. But the fact is, this is not Christmas. If by chance, if this was, if this was Jesus' birthday, but it can't be because they're still in Bethlehem. If it was Jesus' birthday and it was the Feast of Tabernacles, they would be in Jerusalem. All right. The young child, Jesus, and Mary, the child comes first. Notice Joseph is out of the picture. He's not in the manger scene. But we'll get into that manger scene, Lord willing, when we get to Luke. And fell down and worshipped him, not her. They didn't get married the time of day. Did you get that? We're not done yet. The, the sarcasm of Stiley Haver is not done yet. They worship him, the young child. Now I'm going to burst your bubble. If I haven't already. Figure since Genesis to Matthew, figure burst your bubble by now. When they had opened their treasures, they presented him with gift. Him, him, the young child. You ever hear somebody say, take the what would they be giving gold and frankincense to a baby for? He's not a baby. He's a young man, probably just learned how to walk. Young child. There he is standing there, and they hand to him. He holds his hand out. And he's probably going, ooh, that's bright. They give him gold, the authority of a king, the deity of royalty. God's throne is in gold. David's throne was in gold. They give him frankincense. Frankincense is the, is, and that's, uh, we're not going to turn to it, but, oh, uh, where's my note? Exodus 30, 34 to 48. That's the incense used by the priest. Gold is the king. Frankincense is the priest. King and priest. And myrrh. You say, what is myrrh? It's in balmy fluid. Uh, Mark 16, 1, and other places in the Bible, and they gathered myrrh to wrap the body. You say, what on earth are they giving a, a, a young child myrrh? Because he's a king, 
He's a priest, and he's going to die. And I believe the Magi know. Because the scriptures for it too. Now they get the th idea of three wise men because the gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Two of them couldn't bring gold. Three of them couldn't bring frankincense. Five of them couldn't bring myrrh. One couldn't bring all three. Well, it couldn't have been one, but two. It don't say how much gold, it doesn't say how much frankincense, and it doesn't say how much myrrh. Now, the gold is going to be for Mary and Joseph because they're going to go on a journey to Egypt soon. Mary and Joseph, the site where the Catholic Church dresses Mary in blue, Blue is a rich color. She's not rich. She brought the birds, not the lamb, though she had the lamb in her arms. We'll do that in Luke. So much when we get to Luke. We don't know who and what brought what for the gifts. But there's a young child, young child old, not a baby. Being warned of God in a dream. So they stayed at least the night. They should not return to Herod. They departed into their own country another way. Now do you recognize that? I saw that one today. I never saw that before. Remember when Peter and John preached and they said, Hey, listen, you two. Knock it off of that name Jesus here. Knock it off. Don't you even mention, don't you even mention we killed him. They set him free. Peter and John go out. They start street preaching again. <coughs> they bring him before the con. What did we tell you? Didn't we tell you knock it off? Peter says, listen, we ought to obey God more than obey man. Okay? This is defiling government. I don't. I don't remember the the, the hand for the. Uh, oh boy! Uh, you remember the position? Oh boy! My 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 going to blank. When Pharaoh told the two women, you are to kill the boys and leave the girls alone. They didn't do it. And Pharaoh said, well, what are you doing? Not obeying them. It's on the tip of my tongue. It'll come out later. And the Bible says that God built them houses. Petua is one of them. I got her name. Rahab, the ruler comes into her house and, hey, where's those men? Well, I don't know. They, were, they ran out the gate. You're not supposed to lie. There are times where God and the Bible and the Word tells you this. And the government says that. You're to do this and defile that. Now, this is where you got to make sure. you got to study your Bible. And if it God says to do and the government says don't do it, all right, you stand on the side of God. All right? God will be pleased with you. Uh, uh, Herod said, bring me back word where he is. God told him, said, no, don't you go back to Herod. You go. They went back. They listened to God. They went back the other way. We're going to see tomorrow night, Lord willing. Herod's going to be mad. And you got to realize when they tell you don't preach on the street and you say, well, we ought to obey God more than man, they had to bend over and take whippings. 
in which they came out of that joyful. Where you live for God and defy the government rightly, Peter talks about that much. You better make sure you're doing it right. You may have to take a beating. You may have to take imprisonment. But you better make sure it's right. Now, this is right. God told them, don't go back to Herod. They don't obey. A serious consequence is going to happen. We're going to study the Lord willing tomorrow night. Well, you just can't go into it, I, you know, God to, and God's like, no, I didn't tell, tell you nothing. You got that out of your own whatever you pea brain. So we're in Matthew 2, 12, and we haven't even got to the nativity that Luke was there, spell out. Jesus is not a baby. He is not in the manger. There are unknown magi. And the star walks across the sky. Or zooms across the sky. But whatever it's doing, it's keeping up with the Magi. And these wise men, I think they rebelled against the star going into Jerusalem. I don't think they were supposed to go there. I think. I can be wrong. But that star didn't show back up until they came out of Jerusalem. Oh, there it is. And they were great. They were happy. They were joy. It sounds like it disappeared. And God's guidance is going to. Okay, you want to go the wrong way? Fine. I'll listen. I've had this happen to me many times in my life. You go that way. I'm. You know what I'm saying? And Jesus walks with me. Not when you're going the wrong path. <clears throat> God's like, okay, here's a road. And you see this in Pilgrim's Progress. Okay. You make the wrong turn. God's like, I'll stay right here. And I've had this happen in my own life. I went my own path, went around a big circle, got to that point where I left God. There he is. <coughs> Excuse me. And God's like, got a lot of extra baggage, didn't you? Now, we're going to do it my way or not? I've had that happen to me a couple times in my life. I think that's what the man guy did. But I don't know. Sometimes I throw out what I think, and what I think, you can throw in the garbage can. Whatever the Catholic Church, definitely throw that in the garbage can. You know, it, it's great that God in His mercy and His grace, my pastor talked about mercy and grace last night in church. That that little styly that went out, snuck out of the house on December 24th, I don't know what year it was, and sat there and looked for that star. It, it, it'd be a great thing that God, not the Catholic Church I grew in, what if, what if that discouraged me from following God for my entire life? Well, the church said there's a star. I didn't see no star. I guess there's no God. But I didn't read the Bible. But I expected a religion to be by the Bible. And now I'm aged and I've gone to seminary and I'm a doctor of theology. I know that that church, it's tradition over the Bible. And you can show a well-known Catholic, even one that sits in the pew, you can show the, the black and white or red and white of what the Bible said, and they'll say, well, that's not what my church says. Read it. Uh -huh. It's not what the Pope says. That's not what the Virgin Mary said. Knucklehead. Read it. No, no, no. That's, that's not what we believe. 
What did we just read? Because a Catholic is going to come across it. I'm going to pull Rocky Balboa in and then beat you up. But that's what the Bible says. Anyway, aren't we going to finish the chapter? No, we're going to do it within God's time. We're going to do it in the right time. We're going to study the Bible. So when somebody finds these videos, they're going to say, Wow, we didn't finish a chapter. We learned. That guy has taught me things that my church hasn't taught me. Even Baptists. I didn't see that before. <laughs>